The sea was a deep, ink-black expanse as the sea serpent cut through the waves, her lanterns casting flickering halos of light on the restless waters. A chill wind whipped across the deck, sending shivers through the crew, but it was not the cold that unsettled them. It was the shadowed coastline looming ahead, Dead Man's Cove, a place whispered of in fearful, hushed tones by seafarers. The cove was said to be haunted by the vengeful spirit of Elias Drake, a ruthless pirate captain betrayed and murdered by his own men over a century ago. His crew, lusting for the immense treasure he had hoarded, had slit his throat and dumped his body overboard, weighed down with chains. But instead of dying, Drake's spirit lingered, bound to the cove by hatred and an unyielding thirst for revenge. No ship that entered the cove ever left, or so the stories went. Vessels were found adrift, their sails torn, their decks splattered with blood, but not a soul aboard. They called it the Phantom's Harvest, a fate worse than death, for it was said Drake took not just the lives of those who dared trespass, but their very souls. Captain Brandt, a hardened man with a reputation for bravery, or folly, as some called it, dismissed the tales as superstitious nonsense. He had heard whispers of gold hidden deep in the caves lining the cove, a treasure so vast it would make a man richer than a king. And so he had set course for Dead Man's Cove, eager to prove his fearlessness and fill his coffers. The crew, though, was less confident. They muttered among themselves, casting nervous glances at the dark, jagged cliffs as the ship sailed closer. The first mate, a lean, sharp-eyed man named Gable, approached the captain. Sir, I beg you to reconsider, he said, his voice low but urgent. This place, it's cursed. No good will come of this venture. Brandt's eyes flashed with irritation. You think I turn back now, with gold so close I can taste it? He spat over the side. We'll be in and out before dawn. Nothing to fear but the ghosts in your head. But as they neared the mouth of the cove, an eerie silence fell over the sea. The wind died, and the waves stilled, as if the very ocean were holding its breath. A thick, unnatural fog rolled in, swallowing the ship and blotting out the stars. The lanterns flickered, their light swallowed by the creeping darkness. Steady, lads, Brent barked, but his voice held a note of uncertainty. He peered into the fog, trying to make out the shape of the cove's entrance. Then, through the gloom, a faint, unearthly glow appeared. A ship translucent and spectral, drifted towards them. Its sails hung in tatters, and its deck was covered in a mist that seemed to coil and writhe like living smoke. The name on its bow, barely visible through the haze, was the Harbinger, a ghost ship. The crew recoiled, fear etched into their faces as the ghostly vessel drew alongside them. On its deck, stood the figure of a man, tall and imposing, his form shimmering like moonlight on water. His face was a mask of hatred, eyes burning with a cold, unnatural fire. Chains dangled from his wrists, clinking softly as he moved. Elias Drake, gave a whisper, his voice trembling. The phantom captain raised his hand, and a deathly silence fell over the sea serpent. The crew froze, their breath catching in their throats as Drake's voice echoed across the water, a hollow, sepulchral sound that seemed to seep into their bones. You dare trespass in my waters, he hissed, his voice filled with centuries of rage. Did you think I would let you steal from me and live? Brant, his bravado crumbling, stepped forward, his sword drawn. We mean no harm, spirit. We seek only what is rightfully ours. Drake's eyes narrowed, and a smile, thin and cruel, twisted his lips. Your souls belong to me now. At his words, shadowy figures began to rise from the fog. Drake's crew, condemned to share their captain's cursed fate. They swarmed onto the sea serpent, 
their forms insubstantial, but their presence as chilling as death itself. Panic erupted on deck. The crew fought, but their weapons passed through the ghosts as if they were smoke. Cold, spectral hands grasped at them, drawing out their life force, their screams echoing in the darkness as their bodies crumpled to the deck, lifeless and gray. Gable, stumbling back, felt a hand close around his ankle. He looked down to see a ghostly pirate, his face twisted in an expression of eternal torment, dragging him towards the rail. No! he screamed, kicking desperately, but his strength was failing. The ghost's grip tightened, and he felt a coldness seep into his bones, pulling him into the abyss. Brant, seeing his men fall, swung wildly at Drake, his sword slicing through the air. The ghost laughed, a sound like grinding glass. You cannot harm the dead, fool, Drake sneered. He raised his hand, and Brant was lifted off his feet, gasping as an invisible force crushed the breath from his lungs. You sought my treasure, and so you shall have it, Drake whispered his voice a venomous caress. An eternity to count your ill-gotten gains in the darkness. With a flick of his wrist, Drake hurled Brant into the air. The captain screamed as he was flung overboard, disappearing into the black waters with a splash. Silence fell, broken only by the quiet creaking of the harbinger's rigging. Drake turned, his gaze sweeping the deck. Of the Sea Serpent's crew, only a few remained, huddled together, their faces pale with terror. Flee, he commanded, his voice resonating with dark power. Tell all who would seek my gold that the price is their soul. Leave now and live, if you can. The survivors, too terrified to do anything but obey, scrambled to the lifeboats. They rowed frantically, the sound of their oars splashing in the still water, the only noise as they fled into the night, the fog swallowing them whole. As the last of the boats disappeared into the darkness, Drake turned back to his ghostly crew. They moved in silence, shadows upon shadows, resuming their eternal patrol of the cursed cold. Drake gazed out at the empty sea, the faintest trace of satisfaction in his eyes. Another ship had come seeking his treasure, and like all the others, it had paid the price. He was bound to this place, but he would not be alone. His collection of souls would grow, one ship at a time, until the sea itself was a graveyard of those who dared defy him. With a sigh that was more of a hiss, he turned and strode to the helm of the Harbinger, his ghostly ship vanishing into the mist, leaving only the faintest ripple on the water to mark where it had been. And the cove, now empty and silent, waited for the next foolhardy souls to venture too close. <laughs>